it worked out because you're right. It, it worked out, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking okay. for better. So tell yeah. me what you could do to make what worked out even better. Um, I and, did. Yeah. When I listen to it back, I don't sound extremely confident. Okay, good. I'm saying um a lot, which I hate, but um, so I just need to be more, uh, have more authority and be more confident in the call. Okay, so that's definitely what to do. Now the question begs how to do it. So you, you're on, you, you're on point. I mean, there's no doubt about it. But the question is how. So, so we're way past. Hey, definitely good self critique. The lack of authority here is obvious, but at the crux of that, why does it happen to us, right? That's been our obsession lately. Why do yeah. we lose our way so easily, especially when we have all of this organization in front of us that we can rely on? So, so why, right? Yeah. Um, so tell me why. I, I didn't feel like he was like following me. So it kind of, you know, got me off track. You know, he was like wishy-washy and everything. So I let that get me off track. Yeah, for sure. There's no doubt about it. You, and, yeah. and again, that's the safety of a systematic approach is that these are the very things that, you know, he won't play along. How about yeah. that? Right. He won't yeah. play along in the best calls or sales calls in a house or doesn't matter whether we're physically there on the phone on the zoom when they don't play along, that's what we're training for. When they play along, it's like, oh my gosh, it was so easy, right? And everything feels yeah. good. But but yeah. it's the, it, the, the difference is we can become real pros if we can learn how to control the situation when they're wishy-washy. Because you know, you know why he's wishy-washy? He's busy. He's confused. Yeah. And nobody's yeah. leading him. So this is one of those cases where this guy is silently begging to be led. So how you just, you know, this is why I saying how is a big word here today. How you choose to lead him is everything. So in one breath, you say to me, you know, um, you like, you know, hey, this is like, this is like, I got to lead this guy and I do it, but then you don't, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Randy, my man. So the, the idea is how, how stick to the yellow brick formula. You, you just go right into it. If yeah. you just, you, you made the decision to be the authoritative person. So the how has already been trained, right? You know how. So now you tell me how you would do it differently. Come back in there, right? And tell me, how would you do it differently right now? What would you say? Um, okay. Um, go ahead. Come on. Interrupt me. Um, uh, go. Okay. Uh, well, Jose, what I'd like to do, it sounds like you are interested in having Adam come out. So let's, uh, let's determine a time that would work best for you, for him to come out, give you his insights and take a look at your home. Perfect. Way better than what you did before, because you start to get into, you know, he'll tell you what it'll sell for. You're getting sucked back down the cesspool of everybody else. Yeah. And you got to be careful of that spot. Kathy Dillon and I trained on that today. Right. And she gave, yeah. you know, Autumn, a compliment that when she listens to all these autumn calls, there's a certain calmness to the way that autumn deals with a situation like this, right? She just, she stays very calm in that pocket and she knows where she is. She lets the kite string out a little bit, but then she reels it right back in, right? That's what she does. So you want to reel them right back in. Well, Jose, it sounds like you did want to sell the property, right? See, remember, uh, Kathy asked me a great question today when I was training her. Tell me a little bit more about Avatar. Well, the good news is the best part of Avatar or ideal client is this is a seller who owns a property inside the geography at the right price or above that we want. So that's the demographic avatar that we have under control. What we don't know yet is the psychographic piece of the avatar. Is there a real reason to sell? And then if we want to further qualify that, is the timing now because he says he's a nine to a 10. So now we would know we had the perfect avatar from a demographic, which is already covered for you and a psychographic standpoint. Now close for what's logical if he won't play along, right? 
Just right. saying, look, the logical next step for me, for you is let me get Adam to bring this information out to you. And what he'll do is he'll give you his insight on what he would do. And if you want to touch quickly, all the way from pricing to marketing, et cetera, get in and out, right? It's right. got to be much quicker. And, and again, if you're sitting there in this commands post and you have the pinwheel and you're trying to say something about that, like what's in it for the guy, right? I get why your instinct is to start to talk him. He'll tell you what a price was, but you sound sloppy, right? Yeah. And you're better than this. So yeah. why are you sloppy? Because the how you're doing it is off. You're trying to do it here and you're not going to your visuals, right? Cheat. The best thing is it's an open book test. Cheat <laughs> to your visual, right? Okay. Yes. And even yes. if you have to have like, look, even if you have to have the package laid out, let me, let me grab them. I always do on these Friday calls. So I've got my mailables in gray and I've got my deliverables in black, right? I think if you would have these things, all of you physically there, it, you become attached to what you're asking them to allow you to give them. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want mm -hmm. to give you not just this information, but Adam's insight. So when he comes over, he'll tell you what to do and what not to do. To, to get the best price, to get what you want, right? But I still yeah. have to be in that tennis match with them knowing what they want. What do they want, right? Okay. They want to move to Florida. They want to upsize. They want to downsize. So come back into this account and tell me what you know about his psychographic part of his avatar. What do you know? Why okay. is he doing it? Tell me, why is he doing right. it? So the next call was, I did call him back and I got the seller's questionnaire answered. So the, he is in a financial hardship. He wants to pay for his daughter to go to college. So that's why he wants to sell the house. On a scale of one to 10, how motivated is he to use the house to finance it? He said a five. Okay, well, that's not very big at all. No, but uh, Adam was six. So another guy went out and he did go out and meet with them. And he said that... Um, if he does go, he'll go with us and he'd probably sell in about a month. Okay. Okay. So if he goes, see, the problem is psychographically. And again, I think early on, like I told Kathy and I still tell Autumn, look, I, I, I'm not like beyond going out to serve. I, I mean, it's a genuine thing. I mean, if you think that somebody really needs me in their home, book me, I'll go, I'll go. But if you want to start to get paid on a regular basis, don't keep sending me out to five, six, sevens, eights just to help. I need some nines and tens if you want to get real listings and get paid. Now, you know, that's where I, I feel like there's a complete disconnect that you're not getting to the second beat in, in, a, in a full way for yourself. Forget about asking the question. But do you understand why we're digging in on why they want to sell? Do you understand that? Yes. Okay, tell me okay. in your own words, why is that so critical that you know that before you close for an appointment? So you can provide the solution for their problem. You have to know what, why they want to sell. Yeah, yeah. Well, the solution is always the same. We have a good plan. It just changes right. based on a few circumstances they have, okay? The mm -hmm. why is that you're trying to have this match in business. You're a matchmaker, Adam, and somebody who really wants to sell their property. You're a matchmaker uh -huh. and you get okay. paid for the best matches that you make, period, Right. period. So if you're just sort of fumbling and stumbling through, you're caught up in the very microeconomics of what the words are and what the things say, and you're missing whether this is a viable opportunity for success, for business success. Okay. You got it? And yes. that's what I hear in this entire call is that you're getting through and you're muscling through and, and it's a pretty decent prospect and that's great, but it's messy and he's not okay. the right psychographic avatar. Now, when Adam went out, was Adam able to solve? Because this is what I told Kathy. She said, well, when is it, when is that number too low? When it's the reason why, see, like you're not finishing the second beat now. Remember you weren't finishing the first beat? Wonderful. I'll call you next week to make sure you got it. You have to finish the second B. Jose, it looks like a beautiful house. How come you're trying to sell it? Well, you know, I got to pay for my girl in college and it's a lot of money. And I, I think if I just take the equity out of here, really, that's a pretty big reason to sell, Jose. On a scale of one to 10, how motivated are you? 
Well, I'm a five. Wow, really? How come so low? Go deeper into the psychographic to make sure it's something that Adam can probably solve. Oftentimes, somebody will say a five in the moment you meet them and say, well, look, if Adam could come out and he could end up getting you the price that you know would work for you, would you be a higher motivation level? I'd be a 10. Great. Let's book the appointment. I got a few questions. It should be so much. You, you just sound like scared to me. And I'm not yeah. sure why, because you're not. What do you, you're, you're scared of making a mistake, I think. Yeah. And, and it's like, okay, did I get it right? What? Just like be you. Just do you. Don't, don't go into all this extra stuff. Follow me? Okay. Yes, I do. Uh -huh. Okay, good. Um, so I want more calls like that one. And I have another, that you have two calls. Is this a follow up to him? Yeah, that's the next one is the seller's question. All right, good. All right, let's see how you do here. Hello? Hi, is this Jose? This is Jose. Hi, Jose. It's Anne with Paradigm Realty. Um, I said so I was going to call you back to ask you a few questions about your home. Is now a good time? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. See, all this language is, is uncertain. The tone is uncertain. Everything's uncertain here, right? So, uh, so that's what you have to be careful of. So, I mean, how? What would you have said? Uh, Autumn, Autumn, d don't type. Come in here with me. Come in here, <laughs> Autumn. Come in here. We don't. I, I don't want all that noise in the chat. I'd rather hear everybody hear it. Come in here. Autumn. I'm here. Yep. Come I'm in. Here. Go ahead. Say say what you're saying here. I want you to hear from her too. You know, and you just sound like you're questioning everything, and that's not leadership. When you're when you're there to lead somebody, you need to sound like you're you're leading. You know, you you, you don't go in going, is this a good? You know, it's just too questioning. Everything is ending with a question mark, and in sales, there are no question marks. Not something I need to learn because that's kind of my personality. You know? it's every you know what, Anne? It's everybody's personality, and you have to relearn. For me, I just dropped my tone down into my chest when I would say. So how does that sound? Instead of going, so how does that sound? You know, I literally would drop my voice an octave to train myself to speak like that. Okay. All right. It's a good technique. Yeah, it's a good technique. Because that that apologetic high pitch, uh, 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 that's what it, that that's what's behind it. Uh, oh, oh, right? It sounds like one of those Disney characters. Oh my, like, you know, like don't, it, it, you, you don't need that. You just, yeah. you, that's not you. And and it's why, why do you lack that confidence? When we all hear it, why do you lack that confidence? That's what it is. And that's generically for all of us. I mean, in sales, we're always nervous that we're going to fail instead of just, this is why I love this methodology of getting up underneath somebody. You're there to serve them. Jose, the best thing that could happen for you is Adam comes out, he brings the information, he takes a look at the situation, he takes a look at exactly what he would do if he were you, he'll go over a net sheet and he can show you what you walk away with, see if it's enough for college and you can decide whether it's a good move. That makes sense? Sure, great. All right, I have a couple questions for you. Um, when'd you buy the house? Have you done it? Boom. Just, it's all matter of fact logic. When you're serving somebody, just presume logic. You, you've all been, it's almost like, you know, it's almost like getting rescue dogs, for example, that that have been mistreated when you get these telemarketers coming in. Kathy and I were talking about this before. Autumn, Autumn's been in like some real pits, right? Like, a, where you know, I don't know, Autumn, with, whether they whipped you and threw stakes at you, you know, and, and, and kept them. But the training is very typically whipping, like get more cream, get more cream, get more cream, right? That's what it's like. And, and you say, oh my God, oh, if I don't get, right? It's almost like inherent in this telemarketing thing, relax, be confident and deal from that, you know, position of plenty where we know you're not going to win everything. We know you're not. And we want you to serve. We want the brand to be something of service because we are certain that over the, the course of calling enough people, serving enough people, there are going to be so many people that appreciate it that you become the only one they're talking to. You have to believe that like with your soul, for this to work all the time. And, and if you don't like, and Autumn's right, this is a training call before it's anything else. It's to train that out of you. It's more of an attitude. Now, when I was saying how, 
The how is the understanding of what the value of this thing really is. You have to believe that this information is super valuable. You have to believe that when I or Adam or somebody goes out, it's super valuable to them to get this insight and this information in this plan with no obligation for real, no pressure for real. That's an unbelievably irresistible offer. But if you don't believe it, it's falling flat. Well, I don't know if you're going to like this irresistible offer, right? And again, I'm exaggerating the point. You don't sound like that, but that's the, the that's what we hear as pros is, oh my gosh, you don't even understand how good this is. We need to sell all the telemarketers and all the salespeople that come on this call, the value of giving the right information in the right order. Every salesperson in the TRC, anybody listening needs to understand the power and the value of that information. Got it? I want to just add something else, sure. Danny. Sure, go ahead. You know, you know, you need. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me? Okay. So, and you need to realize that in a sea of realtors and brokers, uh, why shouldn't your broker get the deal rather than the next one over? In other words, if you don't sell to this guy, the next broker's gonna, the next telemarketer's gonna come along and nab the guy. So why shouldn't it be you? You know what I'm saying? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. And if somebody comes in more certain than you, the person that's silently be begging to be led sits there and listens to two people. All you outside sales agents sits there and interviews you and they go with the person that they believe gives them the best chance to win. So even though we have a kick-ass plan and it really is best plan or we know it's the best plan because it's probably the only plan, right? We can still lose because we, we don't give them the sense of certainty, that we're certain. I have had more people tell me, I chose you. Someone told me last night, we chose you because we, we she was trying to say it in so many words. We were certain that you believed in our product. And I said, here I am. And I still do. But now we're having another conversation. Reality of what it's worth to the marketplace. And we need to not get lost in this, Right. And so I gave them more certainty. So they went home in, in more secure, right? So you always are trying to bring somebody along each stage and give them certainty and directness. Now, again, you, Kathy, Autumn, you run out of tarmac where your job of certainty ends. You're only certain of one thing, that we're going to go out and empower them. We're certain of one thing that our plan executed by our team is going to, you know, bring that to fruition too. So it just keeps going that we know the entirety of the thing. So you've got to be attached to Adam. You've got to believe this and you should be shadowing Adam if at all physically possible. I can't remember whether you're near him or not, but you should go out and shadow him on one of these things and see what he does. Bottom has been out on a couple with me and she's been on, you know, these Zoom calls and we don't win them all. We lost to a relocation company, right? I mean, we lost to an extended contract. I mean, so, but we're in the hunt. Like we, we can feel ourselves scratching at the door because we're the only ones empowering them, right? So you've got to really believe in that. It's got to be, it's got to be kinesthetic. You got to be able to almost like touch it, right? Make sense? Actually, he, he does have an open house tomorrow with an appointment that I made that I'm going to go to so I can see what he does there. Okay. And I think that would be really helpful. The, the, uh, for sure. The more that you can, even if somebody, if you're all, if, if you're not physically near the pr people that you're making appointments for, ask them to FaceTime, right? I mean, just say, hey, I'd love to bring in, you know, Autumn on this FaceTime. And, you know, can you mind if I Zoom her on my phone? Because she'd love to be part of this and listen in, Right. So we, we can do this with the world of technology that we have our, at our fingertips. Let's just try to help each other be more symbiotic, right? Like this, we need to really understand that pass off. And the problem with telemarketing is it, the training is so finite. Like we don't, we don't see ourselves as part of the fulfillment either. Like when Autumn was selling coins, I don't know what it was like, but my guess is it's finite that I got the order, I'm done. That's my job. See, I don't want that. I, I want us to all feel part of this continuity because that's what brings predictability.
See, once that book of business is being grown, every day a telemarketer or an agent comes in, you come in and you look at the prospect relationships that you already are cultivating because they're the ones that are most likely to become the next client, not the person on the phone, not the person at the open house, right? So, so you really have to like become a part of this whole thing. Yeah? Yes. Okay, Bye. good. Uh -huh. All right, Maggie, are you out there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, good. I have yours. And then, um, Alan, if we're ready to go, I'll come back to yours after that. Okay? Yeah, we'll be re we're ready. Karen's on good. now. Okay. Uh, Maggie, this is the third call to a possible prospect. You already see the package. Uh, Lena wanted me to contact to see if Lena can go over before he started the remodeling of his home. Good. Here we go. I like this. Hello. Hello. Hi, Rudy. Hello. Yes, it's Rudy. Yes, hi, Rudy. This is Maggie with Prodigy Group of Remaps. Uh, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. I know I spoke to you uh, maybe sometime a few weeks ago in regards to your property at 17595. And I know that you were remodeling it, correct? Yep. They're, they're uh, doing it right now, actually, as we speak. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I just basically wanted to go ahead and touch bases with you. Uh, I wasn't sure if you were already in the process of remodeling or you were getting ready to start. Because Lena, yeah, our broker, still wanted me to, to reach out uh, because I know she, she said, well, maybe I could go ahead and go in and give them some insights in, on how to save costs on the remodeling. But if you're already, um, if you're already remodeling, I'm sure that... All right, I'm going to stop it there for a second. It's good, but it's way too much. All these words, it's just too much. You know what I mean? Like we're we're a minute two in, and it and it can be it can be shorter and quicker, Maggie. Back and forth like a tennis match. Oh, you're already remodeling? How's it going? Learn how to ask questions that are more engaging him about where you're really meeting him. Because you're, you're, you're using a lot of word whiskers, meaning you're using, for, yeah, well, you know, I was just talking to Lena, and blah, 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 blah. it starts to sound like that, right? And please. Well, oh, Autumn, so, someone's got a really loud mic there, so I don't know who it was. Because Maggie, can you hear me still? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, let me Hello. see. Yeah, I'm trying to get to. Like, Hello, hi. Let me just see. On how to save costs on right. your modeling. Let's listen to the rest of it. You already, um, if you're already remodeling, I'm sure that you know you're probably already yeah. starting, correct? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, they're already they're already tearing it up right now. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, it, you know, is it okay if I contact you maybe in a month? Because I know maybe it might take about a month from last time that we spoke that you stated that it would probably be ready by then. Is that correct? Oh yeah. Uh, it might take longer. They're it's take they're taking the time, so they still got to do a lot of stuff. So. Um, oh, and you know, but yeah. as well that I have you on the phone. Yeah, um, might as well that I have you on the phone. Did you get a chance? I know you received our package. Did you get a chance to read it at all, or you just haven't had a chance yet? Um, I actually haven't. I haven't had a chance yet. Okay. Uh, read it's still okay. in my email. Yeah. So. Okay, yes, it's definitely a uh, really Okay, exactly why I hate emails. Everybody hear that last line? No, they're not emails. Okay, it good. It wasn't an email. Per 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 yeah. per perfect, but I just want to tell everybody, this guy thinks it's in his email and doesn't care, and he'll never look. Please don't send emails, and don't ever think it's okay. Now, some of them will force you because if they're, they're weirdos about like, you know, well, weirdos is not the right word. They're fanatical about the environment, and they don't want anything physical. And, and then that case, say, great. I'm going to send it. I'll call you tomorrow because I don't want it to get buried in your emails, period, if that's the extreme. And again, remember why we want a physical package. It changes the relationship with this guy. I'm still waiting to hear the personalization, whether this guy is the psychographic, whether Lena really has the right choice. I'm still waiting, Maggie. Okay? So let's see where it goes. Okay. I will go ahead and follow up with you. Okay, it, it froze on me. Um, to oh, see how on. things are going in a month and see if, you know, you're ready, you know, if you're okay with Lena coming in and giving you insights and, you know, just to see if there's anything we can assist you with. Sounds good. Uh, that sounds good. Okay. Thank you Thank so much. You. He's patronizing you. 
This isn't a real call. He's patronizing you. He's a gentleman. He's nice. And he's just letting you talk at him. And, and nothing really is getting accomplished here. We're kicking the can down the road. And this is what it sounds like. It's very subtle, Maggie. Okay. It's very subtle. It doesn't sound okay. like it to the untrained ear, but to mine, it's like somebody scratching on a chalkboard. Nothing got accomplished here, really, because we don't okay. really know when we should call back. You're assuming too much in this phone call, Maggie, right? You're assuming, well, did you get it or you didn't get Stop talking so much, right? Stop talking. Okay. You're going to have to be comfortable with silence. Ask a question. Let him talk. You know why he stops talking? Because you won't. That's what okay. happens here. When you listen to this call, you won't stop talking. You go through the whole call and you determine the outcome that you thought almost from the beginning, what was happening here, right? So, so again, the opportunity for Lena to guide him on what to do and what not to do with remodeling is that ship is sailed. But let me ask you a question about this account on Rudy. Let's go to back to the psychographic training today. Why is Rudy selling this property? It's an investment property. He doesn't live in it, and it was just sitting there, and uh, it was just sitting there basically collecting dust. So he wasn't doing anything with it. It's an extra home, and now I guess, you know, he wants to remodel it and stuff. So. Okay. Has has Rudy um, ever engaged a realtor before? I'm not sure. I did not. Ask okay. Is Rudy considering other realtors right now? I don't know. Okay. See my point? We don't really know anything about Rudy. Yeah. So now, 30 days from now, by chance that, and I don't know how good Lena's system is, but Autumn and I right now are obsessing over restarting campaigns, not losing. We're, we're like tweaking the crap out of ours to make sure that every conversation has a precise moment in the future that we're calling up to do something very specific with that specific person on a specific date. Follow me? Correct. By the way, this is everybody's problem, not just yours. Everybody. This is where the real money is made in this industry because we have to throw it into a place that we can't see into on a regular basis called the database. We can't see it. Most people in this group have a paltry excuse for a database system. So now what we did was we just kicked the can forward and we really don't know what will happen. And if somebody is more precise, they're going to get in that house to see it. They're going to get Rudy more, more updates of properties that sold around him. So you don't really, you, you're like Ann. You don't really know the value of that package that's been sent out. That package, if it was sent out correctly, would have had very specific sold properties around Rudy's property. It would have had the plan. And so you're telling me it's physical, but I never heard you mention it. Okay. You follow me? Yes, I do. So, so like you said, oh, we sent it. How do you know it got sent, Maggie? How do you know that internally with, you know, uh, Alex and, and Lena? How do you know? Well, it's on the list management. They update, like when I put it into the system, I put in the date. And then when Alex sends it out, she puts the date that it was sent out. Okay. So why didn't you say, Rudy, we didn't email it. We mailed it. Yeah. Okay. You follow me? There's some very obvious yeah. things here that just don't happen. And why? You're making it all up. It's This is what it sounds like when we make calls on muscle versus systematic approach. No matter what Lena says, call him back and see if you can get me in there, okay? It still doesn't stop Autumn, Kathy, Maggie, anybody from following the yellow brick system. We always take every opportunity for a phone call. Um, and this is for outside sales agents following up with their prospects. Hey, Rudy, it's Danny Griffin calling from Griffin Realty Group. We talked back a little bit about your investment property that you were going to sell. And I know you were going to do some rehab. Did you start that yet? Yeah. Funny thing you ask. It's underway. Oh, great. What'd you decide to do? I'm going to do the bathrooms, the kitchens. Excellent. Well, what I'll do is let me get you some fresh updates of properties that sold that have been upgraded so we can see what they're selling for. And then I'll also put you on, you know, some solds automatically out of the MLS. So while you're doing the rehab, sounds like it might be longer than 30 days. You can stay abreast of the market. Okay. Hey, by the way, Rudy, did you get that package I sent? Cause I had a copy of our plan. 
right? It just should sound so crisp like that because it's not hard if we understand that what they need is information in real time, solds, right? That, well, and they want it. At that point in time, though, they're watching the market and what they really need is a plan to get top dollar, which includes pricing it right once the rehab is done, right? What else can he condition? He's going through a laundry list, right? Is he going to stage the property when it's done or not? There's just so many things on that seven step wheel that you have to all watch that, you know, that, that info, uh, the training as I go through the seller wheel. So you know what we're talking about here. Otherwise it sounds like this. It's good. You're good, right? I mean, you're a good conversationalist, but the lack of precision is a business killer because now we got Rudy and we don't really know what the heck to do with Rudy. And Rudy's getting nothing from us. And I'll guarantee you the way that you just left it, Rudy has no idea that he got a package from you. None. Zero. So what I would have done is reset it. Rudy, it was a physical package. Did you happen to see it? It comes in a gray envelope. Did you see it? Because there's some good stuff in there. There's pictures and details of properties that sold. You got to be attached to that. And so does Lena. And so does Alex. It's not just the telemarketer. Uh, it's everybody. It's the outside sales agent. Everybody needs to be attached to what this information is, why it's valuable to them. And then if we can't get in immediately, how do we perpetuate information coming from us in a digital fashion so we don't have this big, long, pregnant 30-day pause of nothing? Nothing, right? You got it, Maggie? Yeah, I got it. Thank you. You're welcome. A good call to dice. you have one question Shoot. before you go. Yeah, go. <laughs> go. Okay, so right now I'm doing expired, just so just listed. So uh, next week, can I send you a just list and off obviously yeah. the follow-up? Maggie, I would Is expect okay, right? I would I would expect a call from you every week. All of you should be aggressive with me. Never ask permission, just send calls, right? We'll crash into whatever okay. you send me. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right, Alan. Yes, sir. Exciting. Here we are. We arrive at three phone calls. I like it. We have, we have, I picked three different ones. She had a couple more, but these three. Oh, good. I think the Catherine Pierce, I'm actually meeting with Catherine Pierce this Sunday. Um, so that's probably the one to start with. Beauty. We got a meeting already? Yeah. It's a, it's a long convoluted story, but yes. Okay. We, we could take it. Kathy Dillon, see how quickly it can happen? All right, here we go. Hello? Good morning, Catherine. Yes? <laughs> Hi, my name is Karen, and I'm with Allen's Luxury Homes. I'm calling you because I saw your beautiful home online and noticed that it didn't sell. So I'd like to send you something that will help you sell next month. May I do that? Um, I've, I've got a whole lot of people who are calling me. If you want to send me a text, it's fine. I took it off the market. I didn't have it on the market for, I mean, it was only on the market for 30 days out of all the, out of all that time. But they had me lodged into a contract. So, um, oh. if you, well, may if I you ask like you to, why you were wanting to sell it? Um, I'm wanting to sell because I have another home and it's going to just turn out specifically and put property. Okay. Are you interested in putting it back on the market anytime soon? Um. Yes, probably. But I. I but I don't want to talk on the phone. I've had stomach flu for the last week, so I just want to deal with it via text or email. Good. Go. Well, can I send you some information in the mail that'll help you sell it the next sure, time? Email. That'd be fine. Email or send it to you. No. Mm. Email. Email. Okay. Close, um, we, we close. We can certainly do that. Um, that way, once you, I'll call you back next week to make sure that you receive the information, okay? Do you have my email address? I'm sorry? Do you have my email address? Do I have a main motive? Do you have an email address? Oh, um, yes, I do. It's alanluxuryhomes.com. No. All right, why do you get so lost here? She there with us, Alan? She is. Okay. Karen, you have to, Karen, you have to, unmute. You have to unmute that mic. Sorry. There you go. I got confused and wasn't really able to hear what she was saying. Okay. Did she, she have asked me if I had her email and I misunderstood her. I think. 
Oh. Is that me that just lost her, Alan, or is that everybody? Yeah, she muted herself again. Karen, I'm mute. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Again, I, uh, I had a difficult time understanding what she was saying. I thought she asked me for our email when I was uh, misunderstanding. She wanted to know if I had her email, okay. which I did have her email. But I know that Alan doesn't want me sending emails. Correct. So again, that kind of threw me off. And I was unsure how to let her know we would be sending it to her through the mail, not an email. Okay. Well, you had her. She's. Yeah. Did, you, did you hear her say she had the stomach flu? Yes. Okay. So look at, oh, I'm, you know, just recognize that stuff. Say, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, look at, this is a package of information that will help you. Um, it, it, if I emailed it, it'd be hundreds of pages long. So let me just, I'll mail it to the address here. Is this the right address? Just take it over. Take the conversation over. So technically, Danny, she doesn't have the information to email. So she wouldn't be lying to say, I don't have an email. Well, but, even, yeah, but that's, that that's, that, that's semantics. That's semantics okay. because we could, we could email it. We can. It's just a PDF of the, the magazine and it's a PDF of the CMA and it's a PDF of the cover letter. So you could, you could, and we don't need to go there. We need to more so train on authority. Okay. And again, the, like the first part of it gave you a standing O. It was beautiful. The tone is beautiful. The pace is beautiful. You And she's like, she's had a bunch of calls. She's aggravated. She's sick. There's kids in the background. She's out of field. Can't you hear it? Yeah, she's listening. She's watching hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Not you, not you, not you. Can't you hear it? Yes. Okay. So, so if your heart's pumping and you're nervous, I understand that you can't hear it. But you're, you're you know, and again, because it's early on in this process for you, this is really good. You just start to lose control over her. It's the tail wagging the dog syndrome. Okay. I just want to do it by email and text because I've had the stomach flu. Well, great. But this is actually something that will help you. It's, it's not about us. It's about you. It's pictures and details of what's sold around you in a plan that'll help you get through this process with or without us. You just all have to learn the confidence to grab that value right there. Say it. So I'll pop a copy of it in the mail. Won't bother you. Okay. I'll check in in a week to make sure you got it. You'll see when you get it that it's helpful. Period. I do like the questions you ask. Well, geez, was there any interest in still selling it? And that's sort of why we are selling it in the first place. So I'll take it. It's, you know, horseshoes and hand grenades. That was pretty close. So, right? Why are we selling it in the first place is a better question. Not, are you still thinking about selling it? The issue there is, are we sounding selfish or altruistic? Language matters. Why were you, why were you most powerful word for them? Why were you trying to sell it in the first place? Right? Why were you with the emphasis on you and them and why versus are you thinking about selling it? I know it still is the word in you, but it's, it sounds like I want to know that me, I want the listing. Cause if you are, I want to right? you just sound like everybody else. It's so dang subtle, but it's so powerful. Looks like a beautiful house. Why are we trying to sell it in the first place? Right. And just right. let her answer because I have another house and Oh, great. You know, on a scale of one to 10, once she starts to play along, she's a little agitated because she's busy. So, you know, you don't have to go through all the questions if she's busy. Just say, wonderful. That's a pretty big reason to sell. Let me get this information out to you. Is it, Are you still living at this address? Is this the best mailing address? Well, I want you to email it. No, I understand that. I can give you an email copy too, but it's so much easier to consume this when it's mailed. And it's just a bunch of pictures and details of properties uh, that sold around you and Alan's plan that he customizes for his clients. Bang, 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 bang. If you want to all role play anything with your team leader, it's that. The value of what is in this package, you have to be confident in that. And that's where everybody's falling apart. Any of you can memorize opening lines and get them to say yes, any of you. And you're all getting through that part quickly. But where I don't want to fail you is my pushing on this training piece of it. You must understand what your value proposition is. You can't just say, I'd like to send you some information. And then you can't explain what it is with gusto, with belief, with precision. Got it? Got it. That's what's missing here. But you're very good. How about that?
You are. You're very good. That intro is very good. But but then you just get all discombobulated because you're undertrained on that value and you don't know how to cut to the chase and say, look, it sounds like this kid's in the background. Sounds like you've been sick. This is a mailable package at its best. Let me send this out. If you'd like an email package, sure. Give me your email. Like, don't, huh? Who, eh? Oh, eh? eh oh, eh? You just, you lose, you must have lost yourself to nerves and trying to worry about what Alan wants. Alan will shut up. Danny will shut up. You go do you, okay? You go do you. Don't worry about what we've said here. Try to be trained on it and make it your own moment. Oh, now what did Danny say on Friday? That's going to kill you. We don't need you to be perfect. We need you to be you so that it evolves at a more accelerated rate. If you're worried about what we told you to do with precision versus you learning the, the value of this and really being human, it, it'll be a longer curve for you to learn. Okay. I don't need you to do that. I appreciate that, that you care that much about what Alan wants. It's not what Alan wants. It's what the system we know will serve you better, right? It'll serve you better. I mean, this isn't even about them. We're trying to serve you to make your telemarketing job easier so that you can serve them and make their life easier. It's sort of a chain reaction, right? So don't worry about being so perfect for us. All right, let's go to the next one. Um, I've got Paul and I've got Toby. You pick, Karen. Which one? Um, Toby, I think would probably be a good one. Okay, here comes Toby. Hello. Hi, um, is Toby there? No. Uh, I'm sorry. Do you know it, Toby? Yes, I do. He's my son, but he's in Texas. He's not here. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry, ma'am. Um, is he still selling his home, do you know? Oh, no, he's not. He, he, he lives in Texas. He's perfectly happy where he is. He just got a new home, in fact. Oh, okay. Well, thank you so very much, ma'am. You okay. have a great day. All right. All right. That's just lack of experience. So you got a lead, it looks like, and Toby's name was attached to it, and it's probably her house or some crazy thing. Okay. So when, when this happens- It's actually Toby's house. Yeah. It, this is probably the third or fourth number down, because you know Vulcan, the further down you get their numbers- Yeah. The more likely you could get somebody that's a family member. Okay, that's hold on. Okay, happened. all right. So hang on. Karen, Karen, yes. tell me your yes. experience when this lead came up. How did we get to this moment? Let's just go back and break this down in slow motion. Well, I go through each of the calls like Alan was just saying. And um, his mother answered, I believe it was the fourth call that I dialed. Okay, good. And, and shared with me that... Um, He's happily. Okay, hold on, happy. hold on, hold on. I know what he did. Right. You know, I know what she no. did, right? Hold on. What, what I want to know, hold on. What I want to know is what address was in front of you? Because that never comes up. Because that's the thing you're calling about. Follow me? Right. right. That's just, you just lack the experience to say, do you own, does Toby own this property? See, she gets, she, she gets talking about something that, she's only dealing with what she knows. She doesn't know why right. you're calling. So right. you you leave this one confused, right? Right. And like Maggie's call, there's no clear conclusion. And I know you get thrown off because it's early on in this process and Toby doesn't answer. That's very normal. But, right. oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I was calling about the property at 123 Main Street. Does Toby own that property? He does. Really? Is Is... Is he, was he trying to sell that one at all? No, that's the one I live in. Okay. Well, thank you, because I did get hung up on what do I do by her saying that he's happy where he's living in Texas. The right. House is in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> so, Co yeah. Correct. Yeah. So, so she thank might you. not even know. Right. She might not even know right. that Toby's trying to sell his house. Right. And see, I tried calling several times, and I was just so happy that I got somebody to answer the phone. That was one thing, but there's also another person's name on this um, lead, and so I thought since I didn't get successful in getting a finalization on the situation, I'd try and call Colin O'Hara. Oh, hold on, hold on. You're not done, period. This, right. this went nowhere. Right. This is still a very viable lead. You right. need Toby. 
and you need to be calling about a property in Texas. So fast people, you know, fastpeoplesearch.com, Toby to death until you find Toby, find Toby. Or you could call back and say, hey, ma'am, you know, we were talking last week and I was trying to track Toby down about this, this property here because I had some information for him. You don't have to go into more than that. It's his elderly mother. Let's cut to the chase. I need Toby's number. Will you give it to me? Okay, if you won't, I'll have to find it online because I have some information for him. Okay. Period. Yeah. Well, I know that's just experiential. There's nothing you would have known. I mean, you would have to be Nostradamus and predict the future, right? This this is about just deal with what's in front of you. I have this. That's why I was asking, what's, what's your experience in this lead? Okay, I've got this address. I call this one. Nope. This one. Nope. This one. Nope. Yes. But it's mom and she doesn't seem to be here. So we just get all confused because we lack the experience to say, oh, when this happens in the future, say, oh, I was looking for Toby regarding the property at 123 Main Street. Well, why were you looking for Toby in that property? Well, I wanted to send him some information. Okay. Follow me? And I want to know if he's still receiving mail at that, right? Just like shuffle these people off to Buffalo. They're, they're not the decision maker. Follow me? Right. They're just a means to an end. Autumn did this. And we monetized it early on in her career where she found uh, the name of some folks and she didn't get them. She got the niece. Autumn, do you remember that case? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. What are you talking about? Over in Marston's Mills, we had that house that was sort of a legal duplex and you called, I'm, I'm drawing a blank, the Gaties. Remember the Gaties? Yes. All right. Well, you were trying to get the Gaties and you didn't get them. You got like a niece. But they got you to the oh, game. Oh, that's right. Yes, right? but I just, I just dug hard and got the right name and number from the niece. And, and there's the point, everybody. Autumn's a digger. She doesn't look at something like this and just leave it nebulous. We try to kill every deal, one way or the other. You will buy, you know, sell, or you will die with us. Period. And that's the tenacity to pursue the outcome, right? That's the truth. Yeah. Amen. Right. So absolutely. Yeah. There we go. Good. Yeah. I, and I just, I want to tell everybody like, you know, our own anecdotes, she and I are both animals. Okay. Like you're not getting away from our help. It doesn't mean we're animals and we're attacking you. It means you're not getting away from us. Once we get the grip on you till you get our help. Right. And we're going to give you so much dang help. You're going to scream. Yes. Just do it. Or please leave me alone. I have somebody else. Right. So it's a very the, the Gaties were a sale. The Gaties were a sale and they're they were so grateful. It was it was it was unreal. Absolutely. Because we were so aggressively pursuing pursuant of them and helping them, and we did, right? The Gaties are friends for life, believe me. That's so, right. That's so right. yeah, there you go. So so you really want to bring these things, you know, to a conclusion. All right, let me keep rolling here. Um I'm going to do has a, Sam has one. She I do. Says. Yep. I'm going to go OT, but I got one more for Karen because she's new. So I want to hit all three. Here we go. Come on, Paul. Let me see. I have to refresh it here. See if it'll go. One more. And then Sam, I'm coming your way. Gang up in Canada. I see you out there, Jada. I see some of you all. Um, if you have anything for me too, I'm happy to go a little OT here today. So, um, or comments after I do a couple more, I'd like to hear from my gang up in Canada since we're pressing hard on follow-up up there. Let's try this one more time. And if not, I'll move on. Hello? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. Good afternoon, Paul. Yes. Hi, my name is Karen. I'm with Allen's Luxury Home. I'm calling you because I saw your beautiful home online and noticed that it didn't sell. So I'd like to send yeah, you some information that will help you sell it next time. Market. Okay. Yeah, we. Yeah, You're not wanting and, to sell it right now, or? No, not right now. It's not the right time. So, not the right time. Well, would you like some me, information that will? Would you like some information that will help you sell it next time? No, no. Um, I have an agent already, actually. So it's just uh, personal reasons. We're gonna hold off. Good. Good job. Next. The minute he says we have we have an agent, we're going to hold off. It's personal. I, I mean, next. I mean, you can go further, but I don't need you to do. Let's just go from the position of plenty and let's not make you work this hard. This is a good job. You do a good job here. 
especially for a rookie. I, I, I like this call because we have to keep reminding ourselves this is about the building of a book of business. He doesn't belong in yours, right? Karen? Yes, that's right. It's a good job. Okay. Thank you. All three of these. For somebody new, keep making phone calls. No more overtraining behind the scenes because what's happening is you worry too much about what Alan and I think, okay? Just keep doing these. These are very, very good. The more you can give me, the more we can deal with real anecdotes and adjust this. You two are going to be a smash together. You have a beautiful pace. Really yeah. nice. Really nice. Very professional. So, Katie, my note that I made is that I need to read and review the, the information packet with her so that that becomes more internalized. Alan, I can almost make the case that you should not only do that, but you should really give her a listing presentation around it. And on the okay. and on the TRC site, if you go into the conversion module, there's an hour long that she should watch of me. I downloaded the one of you. Okay. I'll get that to her. Give that okay. to her, get that one going, and then you do one and she'll have two versions of it, right? Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Good Thanks, job. Guys. guys, I'm proud of you two. Really good job. Both of you. In a short period of time, I'm very excited for we you. We did a half. Oh, I'm very excited. You're going to oh, make some yeah. serious yeah, progress. Right. Like You're going to make some serious progress like that. Alan, it will really become, and so will it for Maggie, and I don't know if Lena or Alex are on. It's very much about being very discriminatory about who makes the prospect club. That's the next part for everybody here. We want real prospects being really followed up on. That's my obsession in, in working with Autumn right now. In fact, my meeting with Autumn, as soon as this ends, I have some notes from Rowie where we worked on like making sure the cadence of our campaigns are working correctly for her because we know that we can scrape the cream out of our prospects. And if we get lucky out of leads, fine. But those are really new entries into this prospect club. So it becomes much more about the secondary, tertiary, and whatever other calls we make to tip that client, right? So um, really, really make sure that that spreadsheet is being used, that these names that she gets the packages to, you two meet once a week around that, and that data continues to cleanse itself, okay? All right. Thanks for that. Yeah, bra bravo. This is I'm excited for you, Alan. Good for you, man. All right, Sam. Hola. Viva Mexico. Viva Mexico. Vámonos. Viva Mexico. Vámonos. Let's go. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? Okay. Hey, first of all, it's 21 minutes. Okay. Go. This is one of the most upset okay. people I've ever had on the phone. So I got kind of nervous, but okay, it turned well, out to be an appointment. All right. Well, let's, so. let's take as much of it as we can work on now. And then bring it back to me again. We'll break it up because we don't have 21 minutes. So let yeah. me just, I'm going to, I'm more interested in how you handle the attack, right? <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. I let's got see. Nervous, well, let's so see. Good. Let's see because that's the workable, coachable moment here. Okay. Let's see how you handle attack. Hello. 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 Hi. Is this Mr. Levy? Yes. Who's calling? Hi, this is Sam. I'm calling from Kansas. Oh. We got all sorts of tech problems. Even I froze. Hang on. That was weird. It was almost like the computer heard a, a click and it shut it off. Hang on. Let's just, let's refresh it. A little quicker on the intro, by the way. A little quicker. You're a little slow. And I know it might be a dialer or something problem, but it's a little slow. So you set them up to, to be a little bit agitated. It's very subtle, but you're a pro, so yeah. I can go there. Listen to it. You're too, you're too slow here. Hello? Yes, who's calling? Hi, this is Sam. I'm calling from Kansas. Hello, can you hear me? You're calling from, from where? I'm sorry. Uh, from Cantu Group Real Estate. We're calling because we saw your beautiful home online and we noticed it didn't sell. So we wanted to mail you something that will help you sell it the next time. May I do that? Oh, oh you know, I, I, I sorry, I, I stopped taking those. <laughs> You know, what happened was is they never filed the Form 7B. You know, all you guys have been very, very nice on the phone. I I, I took, I I mean, the number of calls is well over 100. And um, oh. I, I, you know, one more pamphlet, one more this, one more uh, comparable sales in the market. 
um, uh-huh. you know, that, that isn't, uh, I don't know how to say it. It's not useful information. You know, the only useful information that oh. I would Let him have go. is Let him information go. that would, that we would need to get what the house is really worth in the market. I know a house on 926 21st Avenue East, literally I could throw a baseball over 20th to it. Um, it just sold uh, for two point two million or something like that. There was a bidding war on it. My wife and I walked through it. It was listed for one point eight five million, and it went off. Went, it, yes, it of went, let him went, go. Went off. I mean, you might, I, you guys might even not know about it yet. I don't know if you know about it yet, but um, but I know about it because I live here. Um, but the and it just leaves me completely bewildered. Uh, because the house, is, it's not even close to, to my house. I mean, it's not even in the same vicinity. You know, two of the bathrooms need complete. Okay, good. This is actually, you're doing a very good job here. And I'll tell you why. You're letting him have a huge cathartic moment with you. He's, yeah. he's, he's working through. He can't figure out why the heck he didn't sell and the neighbor did. It makes no sense to him. And that's that the beauty of this call right now in this moment of time for all of you is what I always tell you, there will always be expires. Always. Somebody overestimates what the value of their property is worth in every type of market. And it doesn't, it doesn't go off. So a lot of times it's how to properly price something in a good or terrible market or a normal market to maximize the price. The, the art of pricing it right, you should all know we as top producers are very good at that. We're good at that when we have the right person, somebody that will listen to us, some that will follow us our, our direction. We're good at that. And Sam needs to know that in this moment of time. But geez, yeah. you sound perplexed by what happened. What I'd be happy to do is instead of just sending you information, why not just send Paul over, let him take a look at it, let him give you his real opinion of the difference between yours and that and why it didn't happen. It's it's nothing. We we, we live right here. This Our business is right here. He'll walk by for five minutes. He's, there's no pressure. Boom, just close this guy. You got me? Okay. You just yeah. close this guy because you know you have the guy because see what he's doing, Sam, he's giving us all the psychographics that we want right? You can feel the guy's pain. We don't even need right. to hear more of the call. We know he's having, a, and he's a gentleman. Yeah. He's a gentleman. Really nice. He's like, look, I, I don't know how to say this the right way, but it's just not useful to me if I get another comp. Now you could argue, well, look, this is our seven steps to going through the process, which might help you identify where this went awry whether it was, you know, early on in the pricing, whether it was, you know, the condition in the matching and the pricing. See, the more that you know about that pinwheel, this is why everybody should be on those campfire calls. I had like eight people yesterday. No, and I do that because I do back up the plan and everything. I'm like, well, this works, you know, and yeah, but yeah, but you gives gotta, me so much for but, it. But you got to be careful because you're not an agent. So right. this guy is ready for an agent. You see what I'm saying in this case? I can tell you yeah. two minutes and seven seconds in, he's ready for an agent mm -hmm. because he needs insight as he cries. Listen to this. Listen to his voice. He total remodels. They, you know, the, one of them had the sink in there that may have been one of the original sinks. And the other one was remodeled in the mid eighties. Uh, you know, it, it didn't have spacious nine foot ceilings in the bath in the basement with, with radiant heating in every floor. See, he's a detail guy. He's probably got some high C and he did all this stuff and he just can't believe the market doesn't agree. <laughs> yeah. He can't. He's in pain. Radiant heat. Nine, this is the stuff I see when I walk into us. Holy crap, radiant heat, high floors, boom, boom. And my brain is going 100 miles an hour. I'm with him. You see what I'm saying? Paul yes. would be with him, but there's no way you can be. You've never been there like us. You've never exactly. been in that. That's not your role. Listen, it sounds fantastic. And it sounds like I agree. Why didn't it sell? But I got someone for you. This guy comes over for 10 or 15 minutes. He'll tell you what he sees in case you're missing it because we do this every day. So he'll tell you his opinion as to why it didn't go. He'll give you his insight. 
He's no pressure. He's a nice guy. You love him. Can I have him stop by? See how I lowered my voice? It's a question. So can I have him stop by? It's duh. Let me have him step by. Right? Right. So close this guy when you get to this moment, because you're about to probably get argumentative, right? <laughs> about the information, because that's all you know. You're going to try to sell him, and then you're not listening. So you piss him off, right? No. No, no I'm saying. I close that guy. Yeah, no, no. I got the appointment. No, no. But... I'm saying we don't need 21 minutes here. If you know what yeah, you exactly. know. Exactly. If you know what you know right here, what I'm teaching you, we don't need 21 minutes because you get out in the field and you guys are wrestling around in the field together over these items. Why? Close. Close. Yeah, I, that's why I wanted to send this because even if it's an appointment, I didn't want it to be as long as it is. He's psychographically a mess. This yeah. guy. Psychologically, he's a mess. That's what we want. I want <laughs> him. I can help him. See, Kathy, there's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. I want them to be distraught. When you hear Autumn tell me about, he trusts me, or, he, you know, he, he like, is the, that's the personal stuff, but he trusts me. He, he understands us. When she starts to talk like that, that's who I want. Because I know what she's done. She has said, this is the guy. He's got the plan. Let him in the door and you will see. She has that confidence in me that when I go there um, and she appreciates what I do and I appreciate what she does, right? So it's like, that's what symbiosis looks like when it moves along back and forth in a conversation. You got it, Sam? Right. Got it. Good, good. Because I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I, I love it because I got far enough where... I, I know what the issue is. Don't be afraid to close right away on the insight that Paul could, you know, offer. Don't be afraid to close it if it's there. Okay. But before that, I've recognized she's a good prospect. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Definitely. Yeah, he went to the appointment. It's almost, well, Paul says it's almost like a done deal because... He said he was only going to go for 15 minutes and he lasted an hour and 15 minutes. Because and the he, wife was there. Right. You know why? Because mm -hmm. the guy was in pain with real issues that Paul is perfectly the doctor for. So, of course, he's going, oh, I had no idea you weren't like everybody else. Thank you, Paul. Let's keep talking. That's what we want, right? Let us do the thing. And don't You don't have to go so far, Sam. You could be so successful. And, I mean, if I took a scalpel, and I edited out the fat that I heard in the first two two minutes. It would be even better. This this there's a pause. I watched this, the counter. There was a three second pause, then a two second pause. Then if that goes on for twenty one minutes, there's probably ten minutes of pausing, right? Because there's this delayed, you know, whatever it is. Learn how to play tennis faster. You know what I mean? Get it back on his side. Let him play around with it for two minutes if he's having a cathartic moment. Don't interrupt him. Don't patronize him. Let him go off. When he breathes, step in, right? But on your side, get it back smoothly. Let him play with it. If he comes right back, get it back again. It's just boom. You're all, always, you're smooth on your side of this table, okay? Good. Good job, though. I mean, again, ladies, effective. And Sam, effective. You're getting the outcome. This is just to save all that time and productivity because you can do way more business if we're not 21 minutes with one guy. Right? Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Great job. Um, oh, Canada. Jada. Hi, Danny. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Thanks. Um, I don't have a call for you this week, but we will definitely be sending some over for next week. That's a promise. Yeah. Um, if that's okay. I, yeah. I do have a strange question. If Go. that's okay. Go. We like strange questions here. Okay. We specialize. So I am only a couple of months in here and I have this problem when I get a yes from, um, when I get a yes from somebody, like let's book an appointment, yeah. um, something comes over me and I get really excited and then I kind <laughs> of misdirect myself. And I'm wondering if there's any tips and tricks that you rec you'd recommend other than the obvious, follow your script, yeah. breathe through it kind of thing. Yeah. Is there well, yeah, sure. Let's with? talk about it. Why yeah. are you getting, like when, when you get excited, be more expressive about what's happening. Why are you that excited that you feel like you're thrown off? Why? What happens to you? That just feels like a win when somebody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'd love, I'd love if somebody came over. 
Yeah. Right. So when you're early on and you're a couple months in and, and you've been working your tail off and good things happen, the natural human reaction is to say, awesome, this is going to yes. be an appointment. Finally, it's a victory. So until you're a veteran, that that's the excitement of your first goal, right? That's what it is. So the idea is to almost have like a really big, I, I, I'm a big fan of this athletic readiness in your station so that your idea, your victory is awesome. I didn't have completion here, but here's where I am. I finally got to stage three. It's like the great race game that they used to have on TV. We got there in time and I get this one and I get to play this game. You have to look outward because if you look inward to the emotional quotient, we, I, I talk about, I had a long talk all week with my son, Marty, about emotional quotient. There are times when we, our emotions get to us and our emotional quotient or intelligence drops, right? Because there's so much feeling that wells up. The logic just drops. And we, uh, 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 right? It's like falling in love. You just, uh, uh, all the words go away, right? And you're no longer yourself. So the idea is try to get outside of yourself instead of inside. In other words, you're looking and say, oh, this is stage three. So the excitement will still be there. Oh, it's there, but look outwards to stage three. What do I need to accomplish? Wonderful. You can even express it. Wonderful. That'll be great, right? Let me just ask you a few quick questions to make sure our, our date is the best it can be. Now, you're all enthusiasm, you're enthusiastic, but your energy is going outward, not inward. When it goes inward, it, it's like a puffer fish. Ever seen a puffer fish when it gets all fired up, right? It's like it just gets all blown up and it can't even swim anymore. So that's because it's inside. Get it out. Take the energy and the excitement and the tone outwards to that completion of that thing. I think technically that would help. Um, Autumn, any any sage advice there for that kind of excited moment for you? Mm, no, not really. Okay, good. You know, I have nothing. I, Sam is great. You know, Sam is, is great. I just, uh, you know, just don't, don't get startled by them. Stay the course. Yeah, that was Jada, by the way. That's Jada up in Canada. We switched gears. Sorry. Oh, Jada, gears. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, just stay the course. You yeah. know, the, this, the pitch is for, the script is four sentences long. Yeah. So, so Jada, that's the idea. What she's basically saying is outwards. Okay. I'm just being very tactical and technical in my training with you. Get out of your head. Don't stay in your emotion, but don't think that you're going to make the emotion go away. You follow me? Yeah, you can't. You can't, especially early on. I would expect, you know, Kathy, when she's you, she's all excited about this new thing. She hears Autumn and she said to me today, Autumn is so calm and, you know, you know patient in this. Yeah, that's experience, right? That's experience. But even a pro like Autumn, when this was all new to her, this wasn't smooth perfectly until you make it your own, right? But my best advice, get out into the logic of the moment, Okay. You, you can't get overly excited like a kid. It's like a kid on a breakaway. I know I'm talking to a Canadian, so you get a breakaway, right? <laughs> kid gets excited on a breakaway. Nobody's there. And he gets three feet from the net and he falls flat on his face as he trips over his own feet, right? It's The irony is if you watch a professional hockey player on a breakaway, there's almost a moment in time where there's a very small space where they slow down. It's crazy. Like watch them, watch them highlights of the NHL where they slow down and they actually can see all the openings in the net in slow motion, right? Now, of course it comes with experience, but try artificially in the beginning. Oh, I'm feeling excitement. Slow down. It's almost like the opposite advice of what I just said to Sam. Take a beat. One, two. Okay. I've got a few questions to ask you to make the appointment the best it can be, right? Just right in front of the net. You have a chance to score here. He's already said, go ahead, shoot the puck, right? Just slow down a wee bit artificially, but you're going to have to have some cue up in front of you that helps you get out of you. If you try to do it in here, that's where the invasion of the emotion is uncontrollable, right? It's just, you don't control an emotional reaction. Your limbic system does. Right. So the only way to really like use it and harness it is to look outward to the logic of where you're at. Cool. Yep. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Yeah, you. yeah you're welcome. Yeah. Make your, what is your, by the way, what does your workstation look like, Jada? I mean, when you go to work, what's it look like? I mean, you have a nice setup. I do have a nice setup. It's nice, comfy, and cozy. And I share yeah. my office with Sarah Van, who yeah. is, uh, you know, the best. Superstar, and, uh, SV. Very, very yeah. positive atmosphere. Good. Um, but um, I, I think I, I might need to just maybe put up a couple more prompts and maybe just separate my script um, and have that kind of winning page in front of me so that I can sure. just kind of bring myself down. So I'm going to work on maybe just separating my script this, this weekend. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the beats of music, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Even if it's a reminder, beat one, even if you don't have the whole script, that's more in front of you, if that's easier for you. But beat one, beat two, beat two, because three, because when you come down and you sit every day, it's a reminder. You're training the brain every day. Right. That's what you're doing. When Autumn was in the office, you know, her whole setup was right in front of her. You know, now she's retreated to home. I don't know what the setup looks like exactly there, but I loved it. I would go in the office, infographic, infographic, you know, she had, you know, big scripts and things and, and even like motivational pieces that were in frames. It was delicious, right? It was delicious for my brain because I'm like, that's why she's successful. Because when she sits down and she'll needle me like, okay, too many clicks. Okay. You know, why isn't this set up? So she'll keep needling me to perfect that whole thing digitally, physically is on her because that's her space. But digitally, that's my problem, right? I had to keep making it as easy as possible for my telemarketers to just be successful, right? So it's, it's an obsession to keep that assembly line perfect. And if anybody comes near you or SV's desk, hit them with a cattle prod, right? Nobody comes in your domain because it's that important. It's really an extension of our brain, right? And if you leave it on muscle, now you're allowing that, you know, that emotional person to come in and invade, even when it's good stuff, like you just said. Remember, right. don't be the kid that trips three steps from the net. Get the shot <laughs> off. Right? I like that analogy. Uh, Canadians, that. you know, it's easy with Canadians, right? The <laughs> national game, you just go to it. It's the easiest metaphor. Kathy Dillon is going to write a book of all my ridiculous metaphors for all of you <laughs> at some point in time. She said, I've never seen anybody speaking so many metaphors, right? So, all right. Awesome. Um, any final thoughts here for any of us yes. here? Yeah. Any question? Go ahead, say again. It's to productivity and the leads that we have. Okay, um, Joanne, you for some reason, I can hear like almost an echo when you speak. I'm going to say nothing and see if I can catch the whole question. Go ahead, ask it again. Okay. Um, the leads that I presently have, so for example, I'm having, say, 60 numbers to call. When I call through that set, I'm only getting on an average of four answers for a live call five calls, three of the people have already sold the property. There's also a large number, there's numbers in that set that doesn't have an address, it's just a phone number. Okay. There's no address to it. Okay. Um, there's a lot of numbers that is obsolete. So when I go through the entire set, if it's only taking me say, 45 minutes an hour to go through the set, it's not productive to go right back to that same set immediately. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. So a couple, couple things. Autumn, when she first came on, came on with tools that, it, you know, as a telemarketer, she had used. And the best one was fastpeoplesearch.com. So unfortunately, we live in a world where even though we pay for the information to come to us. So there's two things that need to happen. One, Doug needs to talk to Vulcan 7 where he's getting it and see if he can improve the quality of the data that you get. That's number one. That's on him. Two, on you, you're right. Just you can slow it down as much as we know the job is about calling. Unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect, perfect world. So some administrative work could behoove you, right? So in other words, if you go in and use fast people search and you put in a reverse lookup with a number, you might get an address. But I'm a little confused as to why you would get a number with no address as far as expireds are concerned, because there has to be some address attached to an expired. So is that an expired lead you're referring to where there's no address? Yes, it is. Okay. That's a data problem. See Doug about that. And then he and I will chat about that. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. And then I think it's like Kathy Dillon on our team. There's just like, there's only so much work that we can possibly give you in the beginning because it's sort of a rolling deal. We don't, we're not going back in time. So if you're finding a lot of people that already relisted, there's one of two things you're doing. You got some big old cash of expireds that happened over the last six months and they've been relisted or the market's just so hot. You didn't get to them in the first several days and it happened. So we don't know, but you could learn on that data for Doug and I and say, look, every time that I call somebody, you know, I get them on the phone. I ask them, you know, well, when did you relist? Well, back four months ago. Well, that means the date is old and it just already turned or just yesterday. That's just a hazard to the business. There are going to be people that expire. that go right back on with their current agent or they've already have one lined up. So we don't know. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. It didn't say they relisted. It said a property had been sold several months ago. Yeah, that's the point. That's old data. Yeah, yeah. that's old data. It's not relisted. Yeah. Sold and, several months and ago. And again, I would expect that, Joanne, because you're new. So what Doug probably did was he went back to Vulcan 7 and got old data just to keep okay. you busy in the beginning. Yes. So so it's almost like we're trying to jump you, Kathy, everybody, um, uh, Karen. Karen. We're, we're trying to, yeah, we're trying to jump you all up onto a train that's already moving. Right. And so like to, to help you do that, we're booing you with some old stuff that you can learn on. You can get some. So it'll be a little frustrating, ladies, all three of you and anybody else that's brand new. But just try Vulcan, to. Kenny Vulcan provides that automatically. When you sign up, they give you the current, but they also give you the older stuff. And it's supposed to be scrubbed. But, um, you know, that it hasn't relisted, but, you know, it's not perfect. Yeah, right. So, so Joanne, the big walk away would be patience for the book of bills business to build up because you're right. Autumn was complaining to me about that. I can't call these same people. They're, they're spent. Okay, good. I got a new data problem. I got to look at. I had a couple problems. One, let me see what's in my database that's not being tagged or restarted automatically. I think I fixed that last night. Next, I got to expand and get, start filling the pipe with more leads, if not different type of leads, I might have to go to probates too. So it's just, you know, we, we need to hear this from you, which is good. So get with Doug about the, you know, the data and let's see what he says. Okay. Okay. But good job. You know, again, patience, it's coming. You're going to be fine too. I'm a huge fan of yours, by the way. So, you so yeah, much. just, you be patient. It's going to come just like it did for Karen. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, all. Listen, appreciate you all. I'm going to call it a day there. Um, awesome call. Bravo. These are really good calls. Um, and I hope that the rest of you that, you know, I, I don't hear from regularly, um, you have the courage to bring me some stuff here too. I will always take an outside sales issue too, but it's just that the telemarketers are aggressively wanting to be coached. I'm not hearing from outside sales. I would be happy to deal with those things too. I have been trying to make the campfire call um, about answering outside sales stuff too. Uh, so again, push yourself to the front of the line. And by the way, Desi White with a brand new baby at home, sitting here like a glutton for punishment. So um, congratulations to Desi and her brand new baby at home. So she must be really bored if she's listening to Danny on a Friday. <laughs> All right, all. We'll see you on the other side. Thanks for being here today. Have a great weekend. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.